All right, this is Marky e. Bilson, 1420 WEMB Sports Radio. I am, I was talking about the Hockey Hall of Fame, but I want to get to this here real fast. Uh, Predators also, as well as the uh, museum up there in Toronto, not only they announced their enshrinees, and I'll tell you after, Haley Wickenheiser, uh, who else made it. I, I told you already you did, but I'll give you their bios if you're not familiar with them. Uh, and whether or not, you know, it's a good uh, idea, and also who was left out that everybody's talking about. But the Predators also announced their schedule. Actually, the NHL announced their schedule. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to give you all 80 games. Over That'll get really boring really fast, but I will tell you this. Season will begin on October 3rd. I believe that's 99 days away. I think so. Roughly 100, okay? I'm not big on these uh, counting down to a kickoff or opening day and all that, you know. I'm not big on that, okay? It's not, I'm not seven years old and it's not Christmas, you know? Uh, opening day for the Predators, October 3rd. I always thought the hockey season began a little early, but anyway. Uh, that's the home opener, two, Thursday, October 3rd, against the Minnesota Wild. And it's the first time in three seasons the Predators will begin their season on home ice. Uh, anyway, so that's the opening day. St. Louis, the arch rival, the Stanley Cup champs, they come in on November 25th. That's a Monday, in case you're wondering. And they will actually play them on November 23rd for the first time in the Gateway to the West, St. Louis. That's Thanksgiving week, by the way. So the weekend before Thanksgiving... It'll begin a Saturday game at St. Louis for the Predators, and then on Monday it'll be a home game for the Predators against the Blues. Now, I look at that. I used to remember watching hockey games on, on uh, Thanksgiving. You know, I, from Hartford, of all places. You know, you watch the football and all that, and this was before they played three football games. You know, it was back in the 80s. And, oh, look, the Penguins are playing the Hartford Whalers on Thanksgiving. That's what, okay. I was more interested in that than Texas, Texas A&M. Maybe that's why Texas, Texas A&M isn't played anymore, but it should be. P.K. Subban. Predators fans will see him once again on Saturday, December 7th. That's when the Devils visit Nashville. A week later, on the 14th, it'll be the Dallas Stars, who, of course, knocked out the Predators from the playoffs last year. The most anticipated game will be, of course, against Dallas at the Cotton Bowl in 2020. That's the Winter Classic. But the first meeting between the Predators and Stars since last April, when Dallas took the opening round series, by a 4-2 count also figures to be pretty big. And so that'll be a preview for the Winter Classic. I keep saying this here. You know, screw the high school basketball tournament. Uh, oh, look, a, play, a team from the Bahamas is in. Who are they? We don't know. Yeah, we just know they're drubbing up on the locals, you know, in Bristol. I Throw that away. That is so played and old. You know what I want? I want the Winter Classic at BMS. Preds and Canes. Let's make it happen. Come on. Let's throw in, I mentioned the Winter Classic on January 1. What about Tuesday, March 24th? The season is ending... It could be for the division title. It could be for the playoffs. It will be the Winnipeg Jets in Bridgestone Arena playing the Predators. And Jets and Preds. Hey, back in 2018, who knocked the Preds out of the playoffs? Oh, yeah, it was the Winnipeg Jets. So there again is a playoff preview. Yeah, 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 I know. Regular season hockey, you know, get excited about the... Oh, really? that's right, the Predators are playing Cotton Bowl? Yeah, that's something to get excited about. Knowing the season is facing off, that's something to be excited about. When the arch rival of the team you hate, the Blues comes in, or P.K. Subban, that's something to be excited about. I know the hockey games get, you know, sometimes monotonous after a while. I do have a tough time following hockey during football season myself which was really hell when I was a junior uh, a junior hockey announcer. It really... I, I want to watch a college football game. Who, why are they playing in September? Still. It's the Predators. So, there you go. And so now we count down 
to July 1 and wait and see if the salary dump of P.K. Subban, and probably a wise one, although it does take some of the marquee uh, appeal of the Predators away, if that salary dump will allow the Predators to sign Matt Duchesne. And how will that help? You know, he had Alex Doherty. Look, I'm, I'm curious. I mean, power play, really? You know, you got a offensive defenseman, you can man a blue line, keep it in the zone, or, you know, you got Duchesne, who's 5'11", weighs less than 200 pounds. He's not going to sit up in front of the net. What's going to happen there? You know. All right, I was mentioning Hockey Hall of Fame. We began telling you about the great four-time uh, gold medal winner, Haley Wickenheiser. Women's hockey, seventh woman to be enshrined in Toronto. Now, the one player I was the most familiar with was Sergei Zubov, like I said. I remember him with the Penguins for one year, but nobody, I mean nobody, 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 nobody in the history of hockey quarterback to power play better than Sergei Zubov. I told you what the Penguins did in the mid-90s when he played for them. He also won a Stanley Cup three years later with the Dallas Stars in 99, won a Stanley Cup actually two times. He also did in 94 for the Rangers. He was a defenseman on the Russian team that won the 92 Olympics. So, uh, and when I was listening to hockey people talk about him, they were speaking how wonderfully attractive Irina Zuboff was, his wife, still with him to this day. I mean, I sort of said, well, i got to see that. Irina Zuba, imagine a young brunette Pia Zadora. Okay, that would be sort of like that. That sort of cuteness. She's now blonde, dyed her hair blonde. She's, I'm sure, in her 40s or something. But, you know, yes, I mean, you... Anna Kornikova certainly uh, changed the uh, way Americans think of Russian women. If, uh, and if she didn't, certainly Irina Zubov would have as well. Uh... Nino Mansky helped Czechoslovakia earn the 68 silver medal. You may remember in 98 when they did take the gold, they had, you know, like 10 times where they couldn't take the gold. But Dominic Hasek, Jaromir Jager, and Gretzky didn't participate in the shootout for Canada. And that meant in 98 the Czechs won a gold medal and not the Canadians. They'd have to wait four more years. Nino Mansky defected from the Iron Curtain, started in the World Hockey Association, and then played for the Detroit Red Wings, the St. Louis Blues, and the Rangers. The Blues in that time were uh, probably the better team in all of that. But yeah, that's that's saying something. Now, if you ever go to the Hockey Hall of Fame, I don't know if they still have this jersey, because it's been, uh, when was it, 2003 was when I was there, so it's been 16 years. But you really do see just what an international game hockey is, because I'm going through there, and they got a sweater up, you know, and it's from a Russian team. You think it says CCCP with the sickle and hammer? I mean, from the old, you think it says USSR? I didn't realize I wouldn't put that on today. I'm not a total idiot here, you know. It had Lenin's picture on the jersey. Yeah. Not John. Lenin. There you go. Jim Rutherford is a longtime GM of the Carolina Hurricanes, won a cup there in 2004. That is, the only thing I would say about that is I wish that he could have created more developmental hockey because North Carolina, of all the states, may be the most woefully behind in developmental hockey. I mean, producing hockey players. You know, in the west side of this, I mean, East Tennessee, yeah, it's bad, but uh, west side of the state, you know, they play for the Predators Cup. There are about, as I checked, about 29 high schools or maybe more now that play high school hockey. It's club sport. Used to be, in the early 70s in Knoxville, a varsity sport. But you didn't know that. You know, flames are being uh, created. You had had the Crusaders down there. You know, that sort of thing. Crusaders started the same year Bristol Motor Speedway opened up. East Tennessee has a hockey history, folks. That's why I talk about it here. Now, uh... But Rutherford, really, he'll be remembered coming really out of retirement. They say changing the culture of the Penguins to help them win two uh, Stanley Cups at the time. The Penguins seemed to be with Malkin and Crosby and Fleury 
coming up short every year. They were. They'd only won one cup, and it looked like that they would be dominating this decade. Well, they've won two cups. But it looked like they might go over. Hmm. By the way, Brooks Orpik, speaking of the Penguins, he retired yesterday, 15 years with the Pens, three Stanley Cups. That's not bad. He's got actually one more cup than uh, Mario Lemieux. Think about that. York, Ned York, coached Bowling Green and Boston College, two hockey powers to five national titles. Most wins of any active NCAA Division I men's hockey coach. That's the thing about the Hockey Hall of Fame. They'll, you know, I mentioned that, you know, hey, why isn't that ball player in the Hall of Fame, you know, while he's playing? Well, York is coaching, and now he is. So those are the selections here. Sergei Zubov, Guy Carboneau. Uh... By the way, Carbono, I didn't mention him. He was a teammate of Zubov in the uh, 1999 Dallas Stars that won a Stanley Cup. He also won Cups with the Habs in 86 in their last Stanley Cup team of 93. Won the Selkie Trophy, trophy as the best defensive forward in the league. Carbono did a grand total of three times. And yes, you know, combined it. Now you see why the Stars won a Stanley Cup in 99. You thought they were all about the neutral zone trap. No, not necessarily, you know, and all that. Uh, the guys that didn't make the Hockey Hall of Fame. Rod Brindamore, I'm kind of uh, surprised about that. Jeremy Roenick, I'm surprised about that. Alexander Mogilny, okay. Daniel Alfredson. The one guy in New Jersey that they're talking about that didn't make it was Patrick Elias, who uh, didn't play, uh, he's, Ch he's Czechoslovakian, didn't play on that 98 Olympic team, and I think that may have hurt him, but he is the all-time leading scorer with the New Jersey Devils with more than 1,000 points, 1,025, if you are so inclined to know that. He did win two Stanley Cups with the Devils. Devils won three Stanley Cups. They don't strike you as that, you know, prestigious of a franchise to have won three Cups, but they have. Uh... Scored 408 goals in his career. And you know what else? Patrick Elias has the all-time single-season record for the New Jersey Devils with 96 points. That might explain a little bit why the Devils, you know, no, you don't think of them as, you know, oh, they got three cups. I mean, come on, right? And you just don't think of them as having won three cups. No! Because when your all-time single-season scoring mark is 96 points and you never had a player score 100 points and you've been around since 1983, well, you tell me. Think some of that Rock'em Sock'em from the Don Cherry days in Colorado is still with them? Who knows? I, 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 